Hello everyone and welcome to day 24 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the horizontal stabilizer. I am going to be jumping a little bit out of order and what I mean by that is I'm about to be sharing a tip that I have learned more recently that I did not know at this point in time but that I wish I had because it would have made our lives much easier and much simpler on this day. And um, what the task was that we had to work on or one of them we did was to cut down uh, parts of the flanges on a few of the ribs and then we had to go and deburr all of the edges and all of those little nooks and crannies there in between each of the little flanges and that ended up taking quite a bit of time because we sat there with our little files diligently getting in there between all the the little uh spaces there in the flanges trying to get everything filed down and deburred and if we had known this tip back then that i'm about to share with you it would have made our lives so much simpler and it would have all gone way faster so rather than just try to explain it, I have made a little demo video kind of going over it and we will get back to the rest of the build video after this. Hey everyone, so this is a really helpful tip that we have recently discovered that I wanted to make sure to share with you guys because this would have been a, a game changer early on and I am gonna show you how you're going to create this right here. From this two inch scotch bright wheel <laughs> now here you have again this is the scotch bright wheel that we got with our set from cleveland tool and there was a gentleman i'm going to put the link below on one of the vans forums i think his name was eric retired kc10 flight engineer out in colorado eric you are awesome tyler found this and we went and tried it and it has been incredibly helpful you're able to go and take the um this two inch wheel and then you should probably see here i've marked it down into eights cut it down just using a um just a generic old kitchen knife not my best knife i wouldn't want to do that but just a, a old knife i was able to go and use cut it down into one of these eights then take the eighth that's come out and you cut it this way through in half. And so now you've got two pieces. So this one eighth is now two wedges like that. And then when you, you can kind of just like shape it a little bit by cutting off the corners. And then there is this um, Dremel bit, which I will um, post a picture of, but it looks like a little threaded screw uh, it's a different mandrel here, and so you're able to then take this little wedge that you've cut and screw the mandrel up into it. And so when you turn it on, now you've got this wonderful little deburring cone tip to use, and it has been super helpful for getting into, say, these little spots here in between the rib flanges from either direction. And it has just it's been such a huge game changer to have this to get into all of those tight little spots instead of having to go and get like one of the thin little files and get in there um and it, it's super easy and honestly like we really hadn't been using this wheel before with as it was with our regular drill just because with the just with that shape it it, it was you know, we had the bigger one for helping to get along these longer edges with the, um, either with the bench grinder or with our drill press. And the one inch one was a little bit easier for getting into some of the tighter nooks and crannies. But this one, we were kind of like, I'm not sure really where we're using this that we're not using the others. And seeing that tip, uh, again, I'm gonna put a link to the forum post below and again, I, I think the guy's name was Eric. You'll, you'll see it there, it's at the top of the post. Um, really awesome suggestion, but I don't know. We found it to be really, really helpful for us to have this. We've now gone through, I think, four of the two. Yeah, so this was a quarter, so this was cut into the two different eight segments and then cut in half, but it's worked out so nicely having this. Um, 
it just it, it makes it so much easier and it really gets in there I think so much better and it gets through it so much quicker so especially now with working on all of the the ribs that we have for the wings like this thing has just been uh, again just really really great and helpful to have so um, hopefully that helps you guys out it's really helped us uh, and again check out the the link below for the original forum post So one thing that I did realize after filming that little segment is that I believe I said that I cut those eights into half once, but actually I take that little eight section I'm cutting out right now and I cut it into in half twice, once along each axis. And again, make sure you're not using your best knife. You're not trying to, you're not going to be happy with it. It will dull the blade a little bit because again, you're going through scotch bright. But you take it there, and so you've got the little eighth, cut it in half, then take it and cut it in half again along the other axis this time. And so that will give you a um, nice little skinny wedge. And then all it's left to do is to just kind of shape it a little bit after that. So you just kind of cut a little wedge off here, a little wedge off there, off the sides to give it more of that cone shape. But it doesn't have to be perfect because once you put it onto the mandrel there on the Dremel and it starts spinning, it's going to smooth itself out into that nice little cone shape. But this thing, oh man, boy did it get us through um, the ribs there for the wings with the fuel tanks and the the rest of the whole wing kit there, Tyler was able to blow through those so much faster. And it was just really, really helpful. We're both sitting here staring at each other at the time going, why didn't we know about this sooner? So that's why I really wanted to make sure to share it with y'all now. Even though you're not seeing us use it here in the video, um, you can see that you know we're still both <laughs> sitting here by hand with everything, um, trying to get in all those little nooks and crannies with the files. And this just would have saved us so much more time. Um, and I'm, again, I'm gonna make sure to link that that uh, fans forum. I don't remember which one of them it was on, but I'm gonna link it below. And I'm gonna link a couple others. I think this is a good point about why it's really helpful to have a lot of different resources while you're building who you can either learn from, like on some of these different forums, or other builders that you can um, watch and get their input and their feedback. Uh, I, here's a great little list that I'm gonna also link below um, with the different builders for different, not just RV10s, but other RV models from vans. And there, there's just, there's a lot of really great content out there. It's not, I think it's really helpful to have it from a bunch of other people. I know that uh, some of the ones that Tyler and I both really enjoy getting some input from are, uh, I love Ed and Colleen with Good Plain Living, and he he's already built his RV10, but his build log in particular has some really good tips and tricks in there, or input at least, that we've uh, that we've read, and I really enjoyed it. Also, um, Rob and Christine over at Chase Every Second, he has some helpful little, I think he calls them rob observation videos that he does, where there's been some really useful little tips and tricks. They are building an RV10 now. They have already built an RV7, I believe, so that's where it's kind of neat getting some of the input from him and that he's already uh, successfully built an airplane before. And, oh, and then of course, I mean, like everyone knows Jason's videos, uh, I'm sure. And he just, I like it with him getting sometimes some of the input about from a first time builder, you know, some of the different little snags he runs into. So anyway, you know, the more places that you can find help, the better. Like all of our different friends that we've made here in the local area who we can reach out to um, when we have questions about the build. So I highly encourage all of you to go and find uh, other, helpful people there around you if you can maybe through your local EAA chapter and you know, find some really great other uh, resources any additional places where you can get uh, help I think that's really been useful because the the forum post Tyler found I don't think it was anything new it was something that was a couple years old but just stumbling across it what has been so helpful so you, you just you never know what you're gonna find out there so um, I guess always strive to keep learning and get some more tips and tricks to help you out.
While Tyler continues working on all of the deburring here, as you can see with the stack and the little file, uh, I'm moving forward onto another step that we worked on today, which involved riveting the um, the doubler and the little brackets to the web of the spar. And this was really funny because we were using some of the biggest rivets I think that we'd used at this point in time. How crazy, look at these, these are four pins. Look how long that is. Holy These are the biggest rivets that we've used so far. I mean, just, I mean, look how big that is. That's pretty, I mean, look next to my finger. That's pretty huge. I mean, that's like as long as my finger down there. Kind of crazy. These were um, AN 470 84-10s, I believe, were the biggest ones. And it was so big that, uh, no, that's not the start of a joke. It was so big that um, it wasn't on the little, there's a little chart that you get, or at least that we got with our pneumatic squeezer from Cleveland Tool that shows you how to set the gap between the two sets of the rivet set when you're using your pneumatic squeezer based upon the width and the length of the rivets that you're about to use. And the little chart that we got with our squeezer only went up to um, rivets that were a length of seven. And as I mentioned before, these are a length of 10. So that presented an interesting little situation. But uh, what I ended up doing as a workaround, the four tens weren't the only rivets we were using. We used, I think, four seven, four eight, four nine, and four ten. And since the four sevens were already there on the chart, I went ahead and set the, the adjustable ram there on the squeezer to be the right uh, spacing between the sets to use to to set the four sevens and then uh, I adjusted the ram to increase that gap there between the sets a fair amount and then just it was kind of trial and error so I, I erred on the side of caution trying to add a bigger gap than perhaps was needed and then would adjust the ram to close that gap until I got the um, the rivet set just right and by checking using the rivet gauge and then after doing that then for the four eights it made it a lot easier than for the four nines I just repeat the process because you know it's already set properly for a four eight so open it back up open that gap between the sets a little bit more with the adjusting the ram and then so on and so forth and that ended up working out so i do think i tried to google to see if there was a, a just a different chart and i don't recall finding one right away and this just seemed like a, an easy workaround and again it worked um didn't have any problems and got all the the rivet set really great I hope that little tip about the uh, how to use that deburring wheel to make the little deburring tips for your Dremel was helpful for y'all. And I'd love to hear from any of you if you have any other really good useful suggestions like that or other really great resources for, for myself or for others out there to use. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this to follow along as we build our RV tent.